Hey, did you know? How about you in the back? Did you know? Thank you for tuning in to Jazz That's Me. On this segment of Did You Know, I will be highlighting subjects and people you might not have been aware about until today. On today's version of Did You Know, I will have you and your friends hover on your phones like, what? And who is that? And what does she do? Don't believe me? Then stay tuned. Thank you for tuning in to Did You Know? Dangerous But Gangster Woman in History, Part 1. Let's face the facts. Society portrays women as weak. In Hollywood, you will see women portrayed in one of two ways. It's often you will see a woman cooking and cleaning and almost compared to a Stepford wife. Or a woman that is sexy, but what happens when shit gets real? And when the women and the situation is not so sexy? And the fun and games go out the window. Now, what little girl didn't want to be like Xena? I remember being a kid watching Xena and saying, wow, she is badass. In the movie Colombiana, this is her saying, I used to want to be like Xena after her parents died. And then her becoming like this. And sometimes life is just like that. Now, before I get into it, into it, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you guys. In these real life scenarios that we are about to get into, these women were ruthless, harsh, and borderline and insane. Very far from a step away. Now guys, Anne Bonnie was a female pirate. She was an Irish pirate who trolled the Caribbean Sea with pirate John Calico Jack Rackham in the 18th century. Now, Bonnie and the crew had a successful run hijacking and pillaging merchant vessels. Like, she was no joke. She was stealing everything and everything in sight. She did not play games. Now, she was captured in 1720, but she was supposed to be executed. But for some reason, they took pity on her and they released her because she was pregnant. When she was released, she went to South Carolina and she basically lived the rest of her life uneventful in a domestic fashion. Now, when I heard about this, this was my face. I was like, what? A female pirate? But before I get into the rest of these, you know what to do. Hit that like button. Belle Starr, born Myra Belle Shirley. Now, Belle over here lived a outlaw life in the 19th century. Now, she and her husband, a Cherokee Indian named Sam Starr, were known for housing outlaws on their ranch in Oklahoma. They preyed on travelers and cowboys passing through. And at this time, when everybody's, when their livelihood was their horse, her and her husband were stealing everybody's horses. Now. Her and her husband were convicted of horse stealing in 1883 and they did serve time in federal penitentiary. She was charged with a handful of other crimes before being shot and killed on her ranch in 1889. The killer was never identified. Now the next young lady that I'm about to talk about, she, um, she came out from the French Revolutionary times. So. She, her family was nobles and the meaning of a noble is one or relating to the hereditary class with special social or political status, often derived from a, fu a feudal period or characterized by high moral qualities, magnanimous, a noble deed, having dignity or eminence, illust illustrious. Next is Charlotte Corday. Now, Charlotte Corday was born July 27, 1768. And she was a female assassin by the age of 25. Now, what makes her interesting is that she was a daughter of French nobles. Her parents were Jacques Corday, Charlotte Marie, Jacqueline Guadier Desmond Neville. Sorry for butchering that name. But besides the point, she was a daughter of French nobles. So this wasn't like normal for her to be acting this way. She aligned herself with the Girondines, 
the French Republicans, and the French Constitution. So at this point, she took the conflict into her own hands and set her sights on Jean-Paul Marut. He was a leader of the French Revolution and the enemy of all she stood for. So he had to go. Now, she posed as a uh, reporter and she went to go ask him some questions. So she lied her way in to meet him. And when she was face to face with him, he was in the bathtub and she stabbed him to death. Mm -hmm. That's what she did. That's exactly what she did. Mm -hmm. Just like this. Mm -hmm. She wasn't playing no games. Not one. Mm -mm. Just like this. Boom, bam, beam. Yep. Mm -mm. Bye bye, Jean Paul. Now, this is an actual illustration that was actually in the newspaper at the time of Charlotte Coday and how the murder scene looked like, I guess, at that time or was depicted at the time. And now, Belle Ganes. Belle Ganes was born in November 11th, 1859 in Cebu, Norway. She immigrated from Norway to the United States in 1881 and worked as a servant. In pursuit of wealth, she married a man in Chicago in 1884. Now, together, they produced four children. They had a business and it was unsuccessful. And within a year, the store mysteriously burned down, leaving the pair with insurance money. No one knows how it burned down, but either Ganesh either caused it or gave her the idea of insurance fraud. Not long afterwards, her husband died of heart failure. And now, mind you, they had four children, two of which died during infancy, awarding her with even more insurance money. She used the money to purchase an Indiana farm that also had some of its property burns, burned down. Her next husband was, had two daughters and would share the same fate as her previous family. With the lack of family members to bump off, Guinness turned to finding wealthy men through a love lorn column on the newspaper. They came to her bearing, her bearing gifts and money and she greeted them by taking what they had and making sure they never made it out alive. This lady was nuts. With so many suitors going missing, people were starting to get suspicious. One man whose brother disappeared went to investigate. He was like, nope, that's it. Like, where is my brother? Now, he found that the Guinness farm house had been burnt down, as you, see, as you can see in this picture. And in the farm, they found remains of four skeletons. Three were children, and the last were decapitated women. Whoa. Buried in shallow grounds across the property were, f were over 40 men and children. Nope, that's it. This lady was, nope, she was no joke. Um, Ray Lamphere, Guinness's hired hand, was arrested for arson and later confessed that the body they uncovered was not that of Guinness, that she had planned the whole thing to make her escape. <laughs> now, did they ever find her? I don't know. She, oh, look, look nope, nope, she was never found again. Yep. Mm. <laughs> this lady was no joke. Now, tune in for more. Part two coming soon. Don't forget to subscribe, guys. Thank you for watching. Did you know with Jazz, that's me. Don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you.